thank you so much for tuning into the, the Mobility Bros. I'm your boy Cliff, and I am here with the host with the most, Ron Hilton. And I am so excited to be here. We have a special guest today, Sheila, that we're going to get into right in a minute. But you know what we do here, right? We talk about athletic mindset, mobility, the pain reduction and pain management of our members, the thoughts and processes of our practitioners, and the mindset of our clients and members. And today, our topic is going to be about Sheila what she has done, how she has innovated the industry, how she is connecting and communicating her passion with people all over the world and her members. And Ron, I would love for you to introduce Sheila to the world, Sheila to our audience, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man, doing good. Um, you know, uh, next week I'll be flying out west to work with USA Track and Field. So I'll be out there working with the Olympic athletes. So uh, really excited about that, man. So uh, prepping up for that. But, you know, this is all about, oh, oh she lo- it's all about her today. So we're going to rock it out. So um, it's gonna, she has a really brief bio. So I'm just going to go ahead and read it off. And then I'm going to tell, tell you a little bit about how me and her met. So Sheila uh, Thielen, is it correct? The last name is Thielen. Yeah, Thielen. Sheila Thielen is the president of uh, Vestibral training services and master rated figure skating coach applies these world-class vestibral training tools <laughs> in a innovation presentation on how spinning affects the um, vestibral, vestibral vestibular system and can improve the brain's ability to balance and the cognitive processes. Sheila speaks about applying world-class athletic training tools to the general population. Um, so me and Sheila actually met through um, was it was a it was a it was a networking a, net, a networking event that uh, on that was on typically on Fridays. I can't even think of the networking event what it is right now, but locker room, the locker room, the locker room. Um, uh, Tim Claiborne was freaking phenomenal. He actually hosts a free uh, one hour um, uh, a one hour connecting event for people that are in the fitness industry, people that are related in the fitness industry, from pro athletes to uh, people that work in the background and coaches. And um, we always get like a little 20 minute session and break off. So that's how me and Sheila met. And then we took it offline and then we just really hit it off and we've stayed con- connected ever since. And that, I, I'm going to say that was probably during, if I can guess, maybe during the end of COVID, maybe, maybe around that time. And uh, we, we just stayed connected ever since. So, so Sheila, how are you doing today? Oh my gosh. So good. Um, my running joke is we named the company vestibular training services. Like most people can't even spell that. <laughs> much less say it, you know, like, you know, so we joke that, you know, we should have named it something like spin your brain or something like that, you know, but like, you know, that, that would have been easy. We like to really challenge people, you know? Yes. That's cool. That's cool. Um, yes. So let, let me ask you this. I know when we first met you, you caught, you introduced yourself more as a um, figure skating coach and then you got into uh, what you're focused on now. So how did you initially get into the figure figure skating industry and became a coach? So I, I skated as a kid, you know, I skated as a kid. I did it in college. It paid great money when I was in college <laughs> till mm-hmm. I started to understand like the hard parts of self-employment, you know, like if the kid wasn't there or they were on vacation or the rink was closed or it was a snowstorm. I didn't get paid, you know, <laughs> like yeah. the early parts are like the client didn't show up. There's no money, you know, like, and of course, then I had kids and uh, my, my oldest son was kind of a sickly toddler, you know, so like, so the husband and I really worked opposite shifts so that we could cover a sick kid, you know, and uh, who eventually perked up. That's fine. But, uh, but like, you know, like I, I got into coaching, but then I really, when I really hit about 28, I was like, oh my God, if I'm really going to do this for a living, 
I better become the best I can be. So like I, I created a whole bunch of new products and I, it was my early steps in the business where I got a patent on a product I designed. Um, and I started speaking more and doing more events and national speaking level stuff and some international coaching. And, and I worked with a bigger and bigger and bigger group of people and, and athletes. And, but I still had the three-year-olds and the kid who bit me and the kid who threw up on me, you know, I mean, like, <laughs> like, like I still was in the trenches, you know, yeah. and, and I joke that I still am a trench coach. Like I still am in the trenches. I still work with little kids. Um, and, and I work with through Olympians yet, I also work with now I when I expect so I had the harness company, you know, so I've owned that for about 28 years. But okay. then we started to put together. So we joke we're not a startup. We've been doing this forever. So we're already number one in like figure skating, sports training um, in North America. We're probably number one worldwide. I just can't get the numbers out of the Russians. Mm. So I can't prove that. Well, so what I'm you got on the lock? I'm just going with North America because I can prove that. Um, nice. So <laughs> thanks, you know, but but we've been doing this worldwide. Like I was just in Australia last year. I was in the UK. Um, like like I speak all over the world and stuff. But so in one sense, I've been doing this forever. Yet in 2020, great timing. Oh, worst timing ever. Um, we expanded the company to the general public. And everyone's like, don't do it. Don't do it. And I'm like... <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> I uh, did. And, but that's where I met Ron on locker room. And, and we just networked. We networked so hard, really via LinkedIn. And I basically yeah. networked through whole new industries that I'd never worked in before. That's awesome. I hear so many fantastic things in that story. Uh, one, I want to acknowledge your perseverance, uh, your relationship with the hubby and managing children. Um, your Patton at 28, you said? That was fantastic, like your mindset and business. And yes, I also understand the difficulties in summer coming. All of a sudden, your cash flow is half of what it was because everybody's on vacation. Uh, being a trench coach, you know, even owning a business and having five employees before 2020, that wonderful time. We all remember that beautiful time. Being a trench coach and having clients, uh, being able to work with multiple people was great. And now back to the grind and trying to expand and evolve and, and innovate during the time of 2020. Uh, I just want to commend you on all that you're doing. You're international, you're worldwide, you're number one in North America. We have a superstar on stage with us today. <laughs> and I just want to acknowledge that and say thank you so much for the innovation you've brought into the world. Now, I really am interested in, because peripheral nervous system stuff jazzes me up. I love having people do contralateral movements with their eyes closed on a BOSU ball, if they can handle it, right? It really challenge their balance and stability in their space, <laughs> exactly. No, I catch them, I'm big enough, I catch them, I don't let them fall. But I do like to challenge people, and as we get to seniors, especially, who have you know balance and stability issues where just doing like a single leg balance toe touch can really be challenging for them. How do you find uh, your your equipment helping evolve people's peripheral nervous system? Okay, I'm obsessed. Okay, and and I try not to go totally insane on these things because let's, let's go, let's go. go. Let's go. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. You know, like okay, yeah, I'm that person. Okay, sorry, just so no, late. no so, apologies needed. So Please. basically, what we have is, and it looks really figure skating. Like if you really look at it, it looks like how we train a figure skater, but it works on everybody with a brain. So what it is is it's a spinning platform, like a an electric lazy Susan. So like I can control the speed and the turning direction. And oddly, almost 90% of the world prefers to go counterclockwise, not clockwise. And what we really think it is, is that they're right ear dominant. So in putting the right ear on the axis is, is easier for them. So weird quirks we've learned about humanity. Uh, everyone likes to go counterclockwise. <laughs> so weird. Okay. So, but my little kids that are like five, six, seven, eight year olds that are struggling academically, like already young, struggling students and reading programs and struggling with school, they all present as left ear dominant. So it's really, really interesting in the world of like ADHD and kids learning. 
that, that a lot of them are left ear dominant. And, and how you test it is you just look, like lean in. I got a secret. Lean in. So which ear are you going to lean in with for a secret? Yeah, it's your right ear. You know, see what I'm saying? <laughs> your, your right ear dominant. That, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Because like lean in with your left ear feels really weird. You know, like if you're in a really loud room, you wouldn't lean in with your left ear. No. So what we work on with those kids is getting them to go counterclockwise to pull the dominance to their right ear. And those kids in a year, year and a half are out of those reading programs. They're out of those, you know, those education programs. So wow. this is where we talk about that whole vestibular system. I got this at a conference. They had a bunch on the table and I took them all. <laughs> <laughs> right, sure I was only know. assigned one of them and I took all of them. Okay, <laughs> <you know? laughs> Um, but yeah, that's like your vestibular system, like just kind of like right inside your eardrum. And these three semicircular canals decide everything, okay? It talks about your balance system and it talks about how fast your brain can process that initial information coming in from your eyes and your ears. And then on top of that, it's also non-spatial disorientation. So like all this, this <laughs> I joke, you don't know that it's a hassle or a problem until it's a problem. Because as young athletes, you don't notice that you're balanced because it's not hard for you. <laughs> but you turn 25 and you look at those spinning teacups at Disney World and you're like, oh, oh no, I kid. Dude, dude, I buddy, you read that by man. yourself, honey. Yeah, I'll just stand here and watch, baby. You know, like you can't do it. You know, because mm -hmm. Disney has the big barf buckets just right outside of the spinning teacups. You know, because... Oh. You can't do it. You just wow. can't do it. You're going to suck. You know, well, you're going to barf. Okay. So, so then we started applying that to just more and more athletes and more and more people. And, and I have to tell you, um, I, I thought I'd have problems launching into the boys sports because we came from the girls sports. And, and I'm going to tell you, I was totally wrong about that. Okay. Cause the, the men's sports have really, really embraced us because I think we have to find a solution or anything we can do to help CTE and concussions. Because otherwise, moms aren't going to sign their boys up for football or yeah. rugby. You know, it's like, dude, buddy, why don't you do like tennis? How about running? Running looks like fun. You know, like, you know, yeah. maybe spinning, you know, like something, something that's not going to hurt your brain, you know? So like, because are you really going to pay 5,000 bucks to sit on the 50 yard line to watch flag football? No, no, no. Not. Well, like I'm just saying, you know, the happening. NFL, the NFL prints their own money. You know, Thank like you. you own all those jerseys. You know, we it's, we do. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very cool. Very so, cool. I, I yeah, love. So it. we awesome. just kept expanding, expanding, especially into like post concussion, um, balance work, and really balance. You can really see on a balance mat. You know, like like we use a balance mat from Body Tracks. And, and you can see concussions and you can see ADHD in a balance mat. Okay. What do you mean by that? Okay. So what we do is we do like 10 seconds, eyes open on the mat, 10 seconds, eyes closed. <laughs> Same thing. You got to spot them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you close their eyes, you better spot them because anything could happen, you know. Then they yeah. just do five minutes of it. And it turned into a game for me of how little could I do in spinning. I didn't have to crank it up like the kids in a tilt a whirl. Ah, yeah. I, I like to I like to tilt to world people, but I don't. Okay, like, <laughs> like, you know, like so, like I really have some videos of literally people making like just one turn. You wow. know, mm -hmm. you know, like one turn each direction. Like, like I'm talking, how little could I do? And then post testing them: ten seconds eyes open, ten seconds eyes closed, two foot balance. Nothing, nothing shocking. But how you should score is with your eyes open a good score and with your eyes closed, a lesser score, right? Okay. But <laughs> people with concussions don't score that. They score the exact opposite. And so do the ADHD kids. Um, they, so, so what they do is they score the exact opposite. So they score terrible with their eyes open because it's too much processing coming back through their eyes. And then, and then with their eyes closed, they score pretty good because we took out a whole processing unit. And so, so we can see that in the pretest. But then once I spin them, put them back on the mat, then they score correctly. They score really pretty good with their eyes open and a lesser score with their eyes closed. So 
I, I can help reset that in the vestibular system with gentle spinning. And, and it's some centrifugal force. It's, it's, it's a lot of little things, you know, that we do. Um, and to be honest, I'm not sure anyone really, 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 really understands it, including us, but it works. <laughs> and uh, yeah, every, it, works. But it works. And everybody improves their balance. And everyone talks about that initial, like, people are shocked when I say this, but you can feel your brain. You, you yeah. can feel your brain. You can feel like uh, like an alertness. Um, a lot of people talk about like the lights got brighter in here. Like oh. and, and, and and I feel like I have spidey senses. You know, like like I'm super super alert. Oh, yeah. It, in in a way that you, you've been living in the dark and slow. <laughs> wow. And now the lights come on and you're back up and and, and alert again. And and our results last about three days. And um. And my running joke is that uh, with those three days, you feel really good and you also get the best sleep of your life. So, okay, uh -huh. so lots of things are going on. Obviously, the balance system's improving. Everything's calming down in your brain. You can sleep. So now the additional effects of a, of a good rested brain adds to that emotional regulation. Yes. <laughs> Think yes. of when your kids were little and you weren't sleeping. Whew, crazy. Okay, like the oh my god, I was crazy because I wasn't sleeping. Um, started getting sleep and I went back to normal again. <laughs> Kinda, <laughs> <laughs> Kinda, you know. Kind of went back to normal, but then um, the results last about three days. But most people train like it's only five minutes, so like two or three times a week. The five minutes, um, my chief medical officer calls it plug and play. So you just do this the first five minutes or somewhere in the session. And then you just go on to all the other things you would have worked on, you know, PT, OT, education, doesn't matter. Then mm -hmm. from there, at the six to eight week mark, it really sticks. It really, really sticks. So then that way, you could just do it like once a month after that. But to be honest, most people love it and want to still do it every single week. Like, like it's fun. And you can really feel the difference and, and the proprioception of finding your feet and the vibrations through the spinner um, from the engine kind of come up your feet and connect your feet to your brain. So like all of these little pieces all tie together. Um, and of course, we also do a lot of midline crossing in the gear so we can get both sides of that brain to connect, you know, and, and reconnect in ways that they haven't been, especially in that aging population. So Cool. We've just gone nuts. Although the big news, I have to tell you about my big news. I have a bunch of big news. But <laughs> one is that we, we have the obvious, you know, like we have like the platter platform, like right there that you step okay. up onto in the harness. So some people don't fly. They, they don't want to. Okay. They just stay on the platform and the harness is there for safety. And then there's the batch of especially kids or after you've been doing this for a month and you're like, I am brave, I'm taking the fly. So then in like a lot of our NASA videos, um, they go up for the fly and spin in the fly. Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. Oh my, I love sending those out because it freaks people out. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> it totally freaks people out. And, cool. <laughs> but then in my training videos, you see the kids that then catch the Heco stick after literally five and a half turns per second, the kid comes down not dizzy because we've trained that out of them and that whole spatial awareness thing. So you can chuck things at them. They have to catch it, make a decision on the color I call, like, like there's decision-making and non-spatial disorientation. We just kind of just keep adding more and more and more onto the list of, of brain games that we're really training at the same time. So that, that's the fun part. But we've just come out with a new rail system that goes around it for especially like the aging population, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, um, yeah. a broken ankle, you know, like that you really don't want to fly. So you can hold on to the rail system and it's just a gentle turning hold on at the same time. Nice, but nice. That, that also goes back to our connections with NeuroTracker. Um, have you ever played the NeuroTracker game where you, it's the moving balls and you got to keep track of them all? Yes. yes. Phenomenal phenomenal, phenomenal product. And they are geniuses at 
their work and their research. But they work with like all the big pro soccer teams and football teams in Europe. They're they're huge. But they talk about even the research supporting and even children learning on your butt, sitting and doing NeuroTracker mm -hmm. and standing and doing NeuroTracker are two totally different scores because standing balance take, takes takes a, a cognitive load. Like we don't realize it because we're in good shape. But like if you compared it to an app, how much work is it to stand? Is it only 10%? <laughs> is it a minor percentage number of the app yeah. running? Or is it like your grandma that it's all she can do to stand and walk? Like that, think of the, so she, her brain, mm -hmm. yeah, that her brain can't take on other projects because it's all they can do just to stand and balance and walk across the room. Yeah, barely can take on posture, right? So, like, you know, trying to make sure grandma's neck's not forward and their head isn't doubling in weight and all that versus when you're 10 years old and you're up and running. There's so much information. I want to just hold off on. Uh, there was a lot, guys. If you I enjoy this it's conversation awesome. and if you enjoy <laughs> Sheila's energy, go down into the chat, comment, let us know. Have you ever taken a spin? Are you an athlete in ice skating? Does this intrigue you? Do you want to know more? There'll be a ton of descriptions of what she was doing in the comments as well. Uh, Ron, I know you have another question, brother. I could see. Oh, yeah. I'm loaded up. I'm like, I can't wait. But she also yeah. answered a lot about the technology. Yeah, absolutely. The advancements, the progression from yeah. where it was to where it is. I want to see those kids flying in the air. I want to know what that looks like because that sounds insane. But Ron, what do you have for us? Um, so I know uh, last time you and I talked on the phone, you talked that you said that you were working with kids with autism. And um, so tell us a little bit about that. And I and I know you work with the military as well, but definitely interested in hearing about uh, what you're doing with kids with autism. So, okay. So it all started with, um, I had a little, one of my athletes, little sister had autism and the kid, when I first met her was standing behind the mom spinning in a circle going, hi, Coachella, Coachella, hi, Coachella, Coachella, you know, yeah. and I'm like, hey, hey kid, you want to go spin with me? Do you want to come get on the gear? And so I have this amazing progression of this little girl. Um, over a 14 month period. And of course it happens during COVID. So weirdly, this is weird window of time with this little girl that she doesn't get any other services, just mine, which I would never do. I'd never be like, don't work with anyone but me. Like, of course not. Oh my gosh, of course not. And so, but uh, she only worked with me during this weird window of time. Mm -hmm. And this little girl, um, I, I always talk about, if you saw the first video and you met her today, you wouldn't make the connection it's the same child um, because the emotional regulation really came into play. She, she's reading, okay, which is, she was told she was never going to read. And of course she's reading and, you know, and it's all these things of this child that is a totally different kid. So we really started working with a lot of autism work and talk about something you care about. You know, I, I mean, I like, this is, this is what, how we can all change the world even as trainers to be working with these children um, in the sports world. And so with it, um, I just came back from a huge center in Rochester, two weeks, Rochester, New York. And um, they're teaming up with us to, to write. We had about 25 kids on um, in all different levels of autism. And some, we were even able to get the children in wheelchairs onto our rail system. And, and we added, they called it like a bicycle seat to it so that the children could really sit up. Mm. And, oh my gosh, just seeing the children like wake up is the best way I can describe it. The children woke up, they had like an alertness, like, huh, look at all these people in the room. You know, like it was fascinating. Mm. And the other interesting thing about children in wheelchairs is not only getting them up perpendicular and standing, um, for their circulatory system, but for their digestive tract. Okay. A lot yes, of these wow. children, oh my gosh, horrible, horrible digestive tracts from sitting all day and not having the gravity help you poop, you know? Yeah, so like, yeah. so like poor children like really, really, really struggle with that. So, so to get them up and spinning and standing and the vibrations, like once again, through their feet coming up through their, up to their head, like it was, I'll, I'll be honest, 
my my main engineer had to leave the room twice because he was tearing up. Okay, like 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 he had to leave because he was tearing up watching these kids totally change. So we're we're in the process of doing a bunch of papers with them and research with them, and even possibly an NIH research grant um, with some imaging work. So so like we're we're really coming forward on some of those projects too. But but come on, we could change the world for children with autism and and learning disabilities. Yes, it's Let's all about go. exactly, <laughs> exactly making a difference, creating impact. What an amazing story, Ron! Thank you so much for that question. That was fantastic because that's the goal. That's the goal in my life, anyway. And I can see it, Sheila, and what you're doing. Creating impact is the legacy, right? The money and all of those stuff will come, uh, but creating impact, changing lives, giving people their lives back, is fantastic. and with the way you described the waking up, whether it's the person that uh, is the athlete, the senior holding onto the rails or someone on the spectrum, it seems like the neurological system is like so rewired because of the rotations that once the, the rotations stop, it's like every all their senses are heightened. It's, it's fantastic, it's so fascinating. Awesome. Would you say that's your favorite group to work with? Or I know you work with various types of groups. Uh, okay, you're gonna laugh. Um, I joke that, so we're really, really close to a military contract. I don't have one yet. And actually I'm gonna be, working, I'm working with them in a couple of weeks at an undisclosed location. And I can't oh, tell geez. you where or when, you know, like hey, you get like- Guess location hey, in the chat. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'll drop it. I'll be like, oh my gosh, guess where I was. You know? <laughs> Long -term so, so the, the running joke is like the military is both the greatest and worst client I've ever had. Like they send me like crazy emails with huge acronyms and I have no idea what's going on. And I just I can relate to that. try and look patient, you know, and I'm really not, you know, like, oh, I hate, you know, but I talk about it's the greatest worst project I've ever done. Um, but we joke that the military is going to fund the autism work because um, the autism isn't going to fund the military, you know, like we're just. You know, like, let's be honest here. So, I like that actually, so, but, yeah. so it, and our running joke in our company is that um, I don't care about the money. I seriously do not care about the money. Um, I care that we make payroll. Um, my employees really expect me to make payroll. Yeah, we take care of people. <laughs> right. funny, funny how the employees are like, you better make payroll, Thielen, you know. But um, in the end, I don't care because all I care about are the outcomes. And, and seeing these outcomes over and over and over and over again. Um, this is all we care about. But this is the obsession of, you know, how we can change the world and help so many people. Anyone with a brain. Anyone with a brain. Let's go. Let, let's improve everyone's lives. In such an easy, it's so easy. <laughs> it's it's weirdly genius. Like it's, 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 it's weird. It's so easy, but we got a patent for it. So it's so yeah. not easy, but it's easy, but we got a patent. Exactly. It's easy, but not duplicatable. That's right. <laughs> and I love it because I think Albert Einstein said, do the simplest thing, but not simpler, right? Do it simple. Don't do it so simple. That is not like nothing. No brain takes energy. This spinning, you had to have come up with a concept, an idea, a platform, a harness. You're advancing rails. You're putting bike seats on so people can sit with posture. Mm -hmm. You're helping people get out of wheelchair. There's a lot of complicated engineering going on. But the process when you explain it is, yeah, no, we just spin them slow a couple of times and they wake up. It's like, wait, what? You know, it's, it's like magic. So you're doing the simpler thing, but nothing, you know, simple, but not simpler. And I love that. Um, I have been working with um, children, adolescent children who are dealing with drug and alcohol abuse, substance abuse. You know, like we talked about, 2020 has been interesting. I think it's going to be something 10 years from now people will still be referring to. You know, it's not like your old high school Friday night lights football game where you're 40 years old. You can move on from that. This is something that has impacted the world. And so when I think about the the demographic that I've started to help. I'm helping build a curriculum for a company uh, so that they could start to implement fitness, functional integrative therapy worldwide. I started thinking about what you're saying about helping kids wake up and helping kids reconnect and helping kids who are struggling. These kids, you know, obviously they're struggling with school. They're, they're being sent to PHP they're have, or they're being sent to a residential hall, you know, and there's a lot of these children. I didn't realize how many kids that, that are suffering from this, you know, and then they go to these programs and then they get hooked on tobacco because it's like 
that's everyone smoking or vaping or this and the other, and they're not really doing anything to truly change the wiring of the brain, you know? And some of these kids are smart. They'll get in, they'll do their time, they'll get out, but they're back in their environment, right? So how easy is it for them to get sucked back into the drugs and the alcohol and the fentanyl? And we know how bad it's just killing our youth and our youth is our future. You think that your product would be great for, and this is not just for inner city, but this is for the specific population, adults too, who are dealing with, you know, opioid addiction because they had surgery and their doctor started prescribing them some crazy medications and things like that. Could this disrupt that industry? Could this bring change in that industry in a healthy, holistic way? Uh, of, of course, I think that. Of course, I think, I th of course, I think that. But you know, the interesting thing, it, it's funny to me all the weird things that have come out of this that I never saw coming. Uh, one was the better sleep. Like, once again, if you have better sleep and you're, um, I actually just read a paper that the military talked about that you can have PTSD and survive and you can have sleep issues and you can survive, but you can't have both. Okay. Cause that's, it, it all comes undone and, there's, and, and that's where the disaster happens that nobody can stop it from happening unless you fix the PTSD or the sleep. Okay. Well, if I could fix the sleep a little bit, then we can tackle some of the other things and the neuroplasticity that can help with the PTSD or the concussion or the addiction, I think is really, really key. Uh, and, you know, the other weird thing that came out of a lot of this that I hadn't put together is when I hold the rope and you're on the platform and you're spinning, but I hold the rope, there's a weird, almost like a belay connection, you know, of like, you trust me. In, in a way that you wouldn't normally, but I'm holding the rope. So you feel safe, you know, and, and I joke too, I'm like four foot 10. Okay. Like I'm, I'm under five feet tall. I'm mega short and I'm holding the rope and there's a 250 pound dude on the other end. And I'm like, I got you, That's funny. <laughs> you know, and, and it's a triple pulley. So I really do have you. I really, really do have you, but there's a connection. So like in my mind, you can connect in ways that people aren't connecting anymore, which is also part of the addiction story too, of like, you you don't trust the world around you and you don't trust yourself. But here, if I hold the rope for you and then you hold the rope for me and we switch places on the gear, uh, there's a whole new, it, there's a connection there. So you can create lasting friendships and connections that then help you move forward in, in all of these other ways that we don't understand, but it, it's working. Um, yeah. I, I was really concerned when I moved out of head coaching that I wouldn't connect with the kids anymore. And it's the exact opposite. You know, it's the exact opposite. Like I'm connecting with kids and, and even strangers in a way that I never thought I would. Uh, your, your energy is, 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 like contagious you have high energy you you're you might be four eleven but you're a giant you know you're a giant when it comes Good to feet tall and bulletproof exactly and when you say emotional regulation that's what stirred me into thinking about this mm -hmm. population because it's distress tolerance it's emotional regulation it's interpersonal connective skills it's all of these skills that they need to learn in order for them to go out in the world right that's why you know, Alcohol Anonymous works, you know, that's why eating disorder has their own groups. That's why we have these groups of anonymous groups where you can build friendships, you see your peers. Um, but I would love to see, you know, functional movement, integrative therapies, like fitness therapies and things like that, be a part of these programs because we need to know energy can't be created or destroyed. How do we manipulate and move and change the energy to get the chemicals within us that are there to give us that happiness, that joy, that waking up, right? Like you were mm -hmm. saying before. That know, but, so, so my new thing too is head movement. So you know how like kids get onto a couch? <laughs> they roll, they flip, they flop, they woo, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. They like, and then of course we as adults are like, knock that off. You know, so how do we sit down on our couch? <laughs> eh. You know, much yeah. as your grandma, like, <laughs> you know, and, okay, but, but it's that head movement that, you know, when we talk about children, you know, that are now, you know, 56 years old, how did we play and run 
and not be supervised and roll and flip and ride our bikes and go do things. Um, and much less my favorite, the big spinning wheel of death I out on the playground. Oh my God, I remember that. I <laughs> love the spinning oh, stuff. You would love yes! this. Of course oh you love the spinning we stuff. We loved it. I fell off. The big one kid was pushing it. I fell off, broke my wrist. Best day of my life. Okay. <laughs> hmm, loved it to Write the down state. in the comments if you know exactly what we're talking about with the spinning thing in the park. We'd love to see the day. Yeah, they got rid of them because too many kids broke their wrist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, okay. Whatever. But um, but my point is that like when we look at the head movement that children have and how as we age, much less this whole generation of kids that sit and look at the phone all day or an iPad or a screen all day, they're not moving their heads. OK, right. which once again, they're not moving their vestibular systems. Yeah, and so because of that, you know, like like that's that's affecting everything okay the first point of information how your eyes and ears process back into your brain we're killing it okay by not moving you know and that's when you talk about functional movement let me you know, start with the head movement you're know, like there's so many people that can't even sit here and do this without being like oh i'm dizzy you know and i'm like <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> we have our starting oh, point right yeah. we have our starting point Ron, do you have another question for us? Yeah, you know, uh, I saw that you do work with someone. Um, how does Dr. Dan O'Brien play a part in uh, in in your products? So um, Dr. Daniel O'Brien uh, is uh, our chief medical officer. And you're okay. going to laugh. I met him on a radio show. <laughs> Love this. That means we have yeah. some. I yeah, think like we might be able to work together in some capacity. I, Let's do it. I'm a networking machine, you know. So, <laughs> sure. Um, so yeah, so Dan O'Brien is this amazing uh, MD, PhD, MBA. This guy wow. is a genius, and he's really been key in helping us, um, even at presentations and stuff like that. You know, I recently had a call from Major League Baseball. And, you know, he he was on the call. And, and of course, especially when people ask research questions, because realize there's 49,000 papers already published on vestibular. OK, like 49,000 already published on PubMed.gov. OK, but we joke that we have we probably have 10 to 14 in process right now because we do also have a Ph.D. research coordinator, Dr. Erica Olson, that works on our staff that um, we joke that 49,000 and 14 are coming to you because <laughs> right. if 49,000 didn't talk you into it, my 14 are going to change your world. Okay. But okay, whatever. Okay. Like yeah, I got a whole thing. I'm like, I just hand that. And it's been really nice for me to just kind of hand that off. Um, we're not a monster company. I don't have 300 employees. I don't have, um, we're not writing papers, you know, That's we are writing. Yeah. Well, we're writing papers through Dr. Olson and Dr. O'Brien. Uh, we've done a bunch of white papers. Those are all coming out. But at some point, it's really nice just to hand that off because. <laughs> yeah, you're in the trenches. Let's talk about research. Okay, great. And the <laughs> great research. Okay, but the really interesting thing is that what they're also saying is it takes 17 years to go from basically introduction of a product to your PT offices, you know, like 17 years. Okay, wow. so, but is that necessary? Do we have enough information for this product, my product, NeuroTracker, Maverick, all of these other neuro companies to move forward? Is there enough information out there? And, and of course, I think the answer is yes. We can make educated decisions on 49,000 papers to bring this to a PT company near you to start helping people. One unit could help a thousand people. That's amazing. Wow. Does that does that take 17 years to get to your local community center, to your training room, to your high school, senior housing, to your high, high school, school, to your yeah. elementary school? To you, like, does it take 17 years? And the answer, the answer is no. You know, like we as yes, yes, we love the research. Yes. And the other piece too, this this isn't this isn't medication. Okay, boy, sure, medication sure can get out there fast. <laughs> Too fast. <laughs> Too fast. fast. Right. But what, like, I don't know how many kids I meet. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm on, I'm on ADHD meds. And I'm like, get on my gear, kid. You know, yeah. like, 
you know, like, so I have a whole thing on, does it take 17 years to change the world? And, and our answer is no, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. And it's not going to, and we refuse to accept that. It's so interesting because I've seen um, apparatuses, nothing like yours, but I've seen apparatuses where like the uh, people put those slippers on and they do side slide sliding. I yes. train people on those things. And I've had um, uh, this, I forget what it's called, but it was white with a wooden top and it just, you stood on it and you try to spin on it. And like you would try to tighten up your spin because I worked with ice skaters, usually younger ice skaters. Uh, we had a client named Gail who was a coach and she would bring her ice skaters in for functional movement and we'd get corrective exercise going. We look for any, you know, asymmetrical loading or hip shift stuff. And we would do that. I would work on that correction. So then she would take them to the ice and they would perform with more power. We worked slow and fast switch and all the things. Um, so what's frustrating is that at 17 years, that eight year old kid has now continued to develop those bad habits haven't had the opportunity to rewire their brain holistically and naturally. And you're, you're, you're now having to recorrect even more issues when you could have gotten to the root cause of it, you know, day one, that's, that's kind of frustrating. I understand regulation, especially after the whole thing with the submarine, no one's complaining about regulation here, but mm -hmm. I think when it comes down to it, you look at the medical field where they're popping pills and all the stuff and you look at apparatuses that are functioning and you ask yourself like, how does one that is going to be a chemical altering thing inside your body versus another that is a physical, you know, on land, we're not going on the water, we're not going in space, you know, how does those things differ? How does it change? Right. Yeah, how does spinning? Right. Yeah, exactly. But at what point were you like, holy crap, be careful? Like, <laughs> you like, oh, 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 you know, like, 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 at what point were you like, Oh my God, you're gonna die. You know what I mean? Like, like at what point are you like, I, I fear for you. Like, I fear for you. Like, no, no like, like that's I want to join you. I want to join you. Can I join you? I know, you but like I have a whole thing at some point, like mm. although I have to just tell this one quick story. So one of my little skaters at eight years old, super sweet kid. Okay. No Einstein. Okay. She's kind of a sweet little Dingledorf kid. Like Aww. she's cute. She's a sweet little Dingledorf. I love her. Okay. So to, to, she's adorable. Okay. But not a rocket scientist. Okay. Like sweet kid. Okay. Like not everybody's smart. So years, two years go by and she comes back to me at 10 years old. And she goes, I know why this works. I'm like, <laughs> hit me girl. Like, <laughs> what do you got? You know, like this will be a good one. Yeah. And she goes, everything spins she goes the universe spins the earth spins around everything the sun. wow wow she goes she goes the, the earth is spinning right now and you don't even realize it okay she goes our blood spins the smallest atom spins everything spins so when we spin we become part of the world and the universe and i'm like oh, wow. Baby, my baby Einstein, she's so yeah. smart. This kid's my LinkedIn quote of the week. You know, I mean, like this kid's a rock star. And and I'm gonna tell you too, for I the kid that. who I didn't think was smart at eight, at ten, she's a genius. But I just talked to her recently, and she's like, "Oh yeah, I'm in all the advanced classes at school. It's school's boring." Wow. And I'm like, "Really? Yeah. You know? <laughs> wow." Wow, so some of that you? rewiring really helped out at eight years old because you got to it sooner. I'm yeah, telling what an amazing, what an amazing story. Man. This is so mm -hmm. cool. Um, do you, how do you work with like personal trainers? Uh, it sounds like you got all these athletes. So you have performance coaches, athletic coaches. I'm sure a lot of other people, when you said that they go through, you mentioned that people go through the rest of their program after five or 10 minutes with your uh, device and your your coaching. How does that work? Is it a pre post? Like how does you, it? Integrate in there you can do it anywhere. Like you really can do it anywhere at the beginning, the end, anywhere. As long as they're getting it two or three times a week, good enough. You can put it in anywhere. And I'm told that the Russian athletes are doing it three times a day. Wow. Yeah, that <laughs> which, makes sense. Which I, I believe. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about the Russian training programs. Okay. But let's if good is good, then that would be great. Anyway, but it's it's super easy gear to run. And and I always talk about the, the hardest trick. Actually, when I worked with Pro Motocross, when I showed up that the gear had already been installed, they'd kind of been playing with it before I got there, but they were trying to throw each other off the gear. 
like like, like just crank it up to 100 because it's got like a zero to 100 knob so you can decide the direction and the speed. So they would just crank it up and the guys would go flying off of it. And I'm it sounds like, like motorsports. <laughs> it's like, I mean, listen, they, they hit mountains that go upside down and left their feet off the bike. And, you know, yeah. so yeah, yeah, it sounds like a motorsport thing. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, let's, let's, let's retrain this. We're going to start at 20 and go to 25 and then 30 and then 35 mm -hmm. and 40. Yeah. You know, like the, the whole process is of course, moving up. And if, and the obvious thing is when you start to fall off the gear, it's too fast. You know, like you can't process that. So, so that's kind of the fascinating part. And actually, here's the really cool part. On my high speed athlete spinners, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the kids here. I'm not talking about the adults. I'm talking about the kids. I can get them up to about 80, but they they very few children. I mean, I work with thousands and thousands of kids. I only have about 15 kids that can hit a hundred. Okay. Oh. But of those 15 kids, okay they're not just smart like they're eighth graders taking trig at the university of minnesota okay wow, like wow. It, yeah. like like it's pet and that's where neuro tracker kind of comes into play too about talking about what's what's the human performance level but how do we and the answer is 80. okay <laughs> the answer on my gear is 80. okay but how do we get beyond that and I think that we as coaches and PTs and OTs, uh, we always talk about like, how did the kid get from here, but how do we get them to here? And the answer is neuro. Okay, does that make sense? The answer is neuro. And then at some point you can only physically train an athlete so much. And what's the only thing we can add to it? It's the neuro. But when we also look at that too, we have to look at, um, uh, people calling me here anyway. Um, the, the interesting part is like, as we move into that beyond human performance, but how come some athletes make it to this point, but still fail? And then we're gonna go back to the answer is still kind of neuro, especially as coaches, we look at our successes and our failures. And, and I really think a lot of it, it's not an ACL that's our failure. Our failure is the neuro side for the athlete, um, even even the psych side that, that we, that the athlete can handle it or the athlete can't. Yeah, that's interesting that you say that, Sheila. Um, uh, this last couple of years, as far as uh, what I've been experiencing with massage therapy and working on high level athletes, um, and some of the courses I've been taking, especially through Rock Tape, they, they truly focus more on the neurological aspect of how the body responds versus you just working the tissue. It's like, okay, well, how is the, how is the brain actually responding to that tissue? to make it release or make it, or to get it to do what it needs to do versus you just cranking down on that on that muscle fiber just to see if it's going to release but it, it's not it's not that it's how the brain is talking to the to the to the body well and, and there's all this new great papers out about brain and gut and, and i'm always like well duh like who got that research grant if i eat a bunch of mcdonald's my brain doesn't develop right well duh you know, like <laughs> yeah. I got the whole thing on it. How'd you get that grant? You know, like <laughs> it, it seems like such an obvious statement. But yeah, there's all this new, really great papers out on gut and brain health. Yeah, it's so important. It's so important. I want to ask a question, Sheila. You're doing so much with impact. I want to know about Sheila, the person, and what what type of legacy you want to leave for your kids. Because we're learning Sheila, the businesswoman, Sheila, the the legend. The Sheila, the person who was helping individuals uh, understand their neurological system through spinning and how impactful that is. Sheila working with athletes, military, autism, special groups, seniors, all amazing. But I want to know Sheila, the mom, Sheila, you know, the wife. <laughs> Sheila gets up in the morning and looks at herself in the mirror and says her affirmations because I want people to understand who you are as much as I get from looking in your eyes and being able to spend this time with you. And I, I really do appreciate you sharing this time. I think you're a Ooh. wonderful soul Ooh. and a blessing to be here and you're doing amazing things in the world. Ron, thank you so much for this introduction. Yeah. Can ask for a better way to meet somebody. Uh, so Sheila, what is the legacy you want to leave? What is the memory you want to leave behind when all said and done and your children are running your business and you're sitting in Hawaii or wherever you want to sit and uh, <laughs> and you're reflecting back on all the things you've done? What is it that you want people to think about? You know, I, 
we, we all talk about success and I really have to show so much gratitude to all the people that helped me get here. Um, from the guy that fired me years ago that told me I was a horrible person <laughs> and a bad coach uh, and other adjectives that we can't say on, you know, even this, you know, but, but you know, but from, from, from failure pieces to so much weird success, but who was there through all of it, okay, is my husband, Scott, who uh, really... God, the dude is the best. Okay. And, and when I talk about marriages that we're all in it, that everybody wins, you know, that, you know, we don't keep track of stuff. Like nobody keeps track of who did the dishes last. And, and Scott's the best that if he walked past dishes, he'd do it. If he walked past a crying kid, he dealt with it. The dog barfed, he cleaned it up. You know, I mean, like never once in, it's going to be 30 years of marriage this September, Ooh. you know, like 30 years. Not once was he like, or was I like, hey, could you do a load of laundry? You know, like crap, you know, like, like that's, it was the team that got the team to the, the Roxy, you know what I mean? Like, and, and I, I go back to like, your marriage is like step one of, is it, is life great or is life crap, you know? And, and my life has always been great, 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 great because I, I had the best partner in the world, you know, yeah. that was perfect for me. And, you know, and, and I go back to the good old Scott that, you know, just does that really helps with anything that I need. And he's the better parent too. I'm going to say too. the kids will agree, you know, <laughs> who's the better parent, you know, but, but, but our kids really had to learn independence early on. Cause I didn't really travel a lot till they were more in middle school. But, you know, like mom was gone for the weekend. And although, here's a funny story. So uh, the, the rule was the rules ceased when I was out of town. So there was no, there's no rules on the weekend because I left on Friday and I came back Sunday night from a lot of these seminars and events and conferences. And so there were no rules. So usually someone was in the emergency room while I was gone. Okay. <laughs> somebody somebody ended up with a broken ankle or a broken wrist or scott fell off the retaining wall and you know like like there's always something happening at our house like and it was usually an emergency room trip you know <laughs> like you know and that it just added to the feelings you know what i mean like my daughter at one point had had i think it was like six broken ankles in a three and a half year window to the point at the the two level middle school, she never handed in the elevator key in three years. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah, I'll just take the other. It's mine. It's mine. This this ankle. Yeah, man. I just I'm just gonna live in the elevator. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's you funny. know. So, so yeah. So like like but like we were we were kind of the chaos family, and we the kids really grew in that chaos that they really do well in chaos. Um, my daughter. Uh, is actually just coming home from, she just finished her master's uh, in Oslo, Norway, and then worked for a year and a half in Oslo, um, wow. although her work visa ended. So if anyone's hiring in Oslo that can do a new work visa, <laughs> Dio wants your job, but, <laughs> uh, but like the, the whole group, uh, my son is amazing, you know, and um, we have three huge dogs and actually our biggest problem is the dogs, you know, for needing a dog sitter. So I was looking for dog sitters too, but you it's, go. you know, yeah. but, but, but we were in chaos and, and the, the legacy is the family and the joy and the fun and the, the, the little trips, but the, just sitting around watching Netflix and, um, That's awesome. you know, like but there's so much, the, the legacy is the family mm. and the teaming up with the families because the family has helped me through this whole process. And, um, even, with manufacturing or shipping or sales or booths my kids are pros at booths because they sat at a lot of booths growing up you know so like it's a weird family project of of how we all got to this place it's beautiful actually i think it's beautiful because yes you were gone for the weekend and they had their time and maybe someone broke an ankle or someone fell or whatever happened like we all have it, we all can express it. I'm sure my poor kid, I took him to the park and fell on his face and cut his face open. And I'm like, his face, not his face. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, son. I'm so sorry. What did I do? 
I didn't, you know, he was just playing on one of those stubborn things and slipped because it was wet. I should have sued the place, but he's in summer <laughs> camp now, you know, and like it happens. These things happen. It's a part of being a family. What I hear is your loyalty and love for your husband who stayed there. Mm. Scott, shout out to you, Big Scott, for whoop, being whoop. such an anchor in this amazing journey. Your kids sound like they're doing fantastic things and amazing things. They're willing to take risks, get out of the country, see the world because they saw what you were able to do. And they were included in the things you were doing. They watched mom at the booths. They watched dad support mom. They saw packaging coming in. Um, as an entrepreneur and a father myself who's taken the reins and who went out in 2021 to join ecosystems and network and build in the middle of a pandemic and everybody thought I was crazy, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't do that. I wouldn't be here meeting you if I didn't take one step and invest time and money and energy into opening up doors and taking on challenges. And so I respect what you were able to do. It's the entrepreneur way right there is no book that <laughs> i don't care how many books on tape you want to see or read there's no book that's going to really depict what your life will look like and we appreciate that so your legacy being family over money over all those other things shows where your impact really lies and that's a beautiful thing thank you for sharing awesome. we all want to overprotect our kids we all do but that's not protecting them you know and i like a good dent to the face good scar that kid that's a good story you know um, he's gonna look like yeah his older brother's 22 i have a 22 and a six-year-old and his older brother came home he was like don't repeat this but that looks so badass he's like, <laughs> he's like, yeah you like it he's like yeah you're so cool oh. he's like, cool yeah <laughs> you know it's, it's cool. It's i know but like I, I'm, I'm like, I had a wrist surgery that then I had like an infection, you know, like it looked bad. And then I got clipped in the face, you know, so I had the, the face scar and I had the wrist thing. And even one of the kids at the rink is like, hey, Coach Sheila, you okay? <laughs> and I'm like, fine, fine. It's all going to heal up, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The beautiful Don't thing worry. about the body. That's the beautiful thing about the body. Yeah, yeah. Don, any final, final questions before we let you go? No, no, no final questions. Uh, just uh, you got your roof, roof. Yeah. I, got, I got a dog, I got the old dog still. <laughs> nice. Yeah, no final questions. Um, yeah, I was able, and this is, this is just a really quick side story. I Sheila reached out to me about a massage therapist, and I just happened to know one in her area that I worked with at the Olympic trials, and <laughs> she's like, What 10 states over? <laughs> wow. And so I think that was really cool to Rachel, with. Rachel changed my life. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, I have to tell you, genius. You know, yeah, I mean, I was looking at another that. shoulder surgery. Like, I really thought I was going to go in for another one. And huh, one, one appointment with Rachel and boom, problem solved. So yeah, I have like, to tell you. She's a cupping genius too. Genius. Yeah genius and i'm so grateful for but this is where like that whole in let's let's network this you know let's fix this and um oh my god rachel Pyram, genius like so grateful so that's yeah. awesome. love her that's awesome this has been fantastic i am so grateful for everyone here uh i had a blast i learned so much about you sheila uh your impact to your family your impact to different communities what it means to really understand what's going on in your head, in your ears, how you take in senses, how you can better be awake. Um, please let us know where we can find your information. Uh, we'll put everything in the description, yeah. how people can research you, what websites to look for you, what YouTube videos yeah, to search. For me. How do we find you, Sheila? Well, the easiest one is LinkedIn, because I'm just a huge fan of LinkedIn. Um, I really, um, I really love LinkedIn. Uh, also, of course, the main website, which is spinyourbrain.com. Uh, and it's got the different divisions within our company. So you can look at the military division. You can look at um, children. Um, I don't post a lot of data on or videos on children with autism because I just feel like it's just a little too personal. You know, so I really work through the professionals on that. I really don't have a lot of children's videos because... I don't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, 
<laughs> even though I have permission to share them, I don't know. It just feels too personal to me, you know? So, um, but I have tons of athlete videos. They're all over uh, Instagram and Facebook um, under the main company's name of Vestibular Training Services. So that's all over the obvious social medias. Uh, but LinkedIn is still my favorite because then I, I can really work with professionals. You know, Beautiful. I will be finding you on LinkedIn. We will be connected. Ron, take it away, brother. All right, everyone. I want you to stay awesome. Keep stepping to greatness and be legendary. Have a most amazing legendary Tuesday here on Mobility Bros. Thank you, Sheila. And we appreciate you. Thank Take you. care, everybody. Bye-bye.